right, welcome to this episode of The Daily. My name is Brendan Malone. Well, uh, last week there was a bit of a media storm and a teacup, and it actually kicked off the week before when uh, Gareth Morgan wrote an opinion piece attacking MP Simon O'Connor, who is the chair of the Health Select Committee, which is overseeing the uh, current inquiry into the question of uh, euthanasia, suicide, assisted suicide in, in New Zealand. And they really went to town, particularly Gareth Morgan, really went to town attacking uh, Simon O'Connor and challenging his integrity because of the fact that Simon O'Connor, even though he's chair of this particular select committee, he has made no secret of the fact that he is personally opposed to euthanasia. And so because of this, they really went to town on him. I, I think this is completely unjustified. The key issue is not what his personal beliefs are. The key issue is whether or not he is executing that political process, that democratic process, with, with justice and fairness and balance, and he's executing it according to the book. The process has been open. It has allowed people to make submissions. The select committee isn't just one man. It's not just Simon O'Connor. There is a whole committee involved. They will review things, and then they will make a report at the end of it based on what happens. So I'm really confused as to how people think that MP Simon O'Connor is going to stymie uh, what the public wants here. The process of a select committee is not to make a law or to make decisions. They are just there to collect information effectively to put it all together and then take it back to Parliament. It would be extremely difficult for the head of a select committee to actually uh, swindle people and to lead the process so far up the garden path that they could personally get what they wanted to. I mean, this is the these things have been set up in, in a way effectively that actually prevent a lot of uh, that sort of corruption from taking place. You know, imagine a scenario in which a select committee head could be bribed, for example, to to trick the process in a certain direction. It, it really doesn't work like that. Um, I think there's also a big question here about why you would challenge a person's integrity. Like Simon O'Connor has not hidden this. He's not lied to the public. He's not tried to pretend he's something that he's not, which I think would raise some big questions. If he was hiding this information, he was uh, telling people that he was neutral when he really wasn't. That would really would question, I think, or raise questions about his integrity. But it, he's been quite upfront about that. So I don't think there's really any big issue here. I don't mind MPs exercising their own free conscience rights. I actually think it's a really important human right. And, and I think it's good for MPs to be free of coercion. And I don't think MPs should be penalised for holding views personally, even if they are public about those views, I don't think they should be penalised for holding those views unless the views they hold are quite clearly make them unfit for office. And in this case, that clearly isn't the case. Simon O'Connor is someone who obviously is motivated by care for the vulnerable members of our community. And so that's the why he holds the view that he holds. That's certainly no reason to disqualify him from office or from certainly from executing his office and, and his role as, as chairperson of the Health Select Committee. I really think what this boils down to, though, is ultimately the fact that uh, a group of pro-assisted suicide campaigners are unhappy about the fact that uh, the Select Committee has rightly framed this issue within the context, the wider context of suicide. If you're going to talk about legalising assisted suicide, then you do have to talk about how that will impact suicide uh, in, in general and you know issues around that, and particularly those vulnerable members of our community who are affected by that issue, uh, how that is going to affect them and whether there's going to be a whole lot of harms that are going to result from that. Now, I know that assisted suicide campaigners don't like that. A lot of them deliberately try and use other words instead of suicide. The simple fact is, is that it is an assisted suicide, though. If a person takes their own life, that's suicide. If someone else assists them to do it, that's still a suicide, a form of suicide. Now, they don't like that because they, they obviously realise that a lot of people in the public know that suicide is not a good thing. The only reason I can think of to be so strongly opposed to Simon O'Connor here and to the fact that this issue is being considered in a broader context is if you really probably in your heart of hearts know that your uh, particular issue, the thing that you're lobbying for, isn't really as strong as you think it is and it doesn't stand up to proper scrutiny and so you are wanting a process which effectively ignores a whole lot of really important evidence in order to railroad something through into law. But that's not how good democracy should, should actually work. And regardless of whether or not you agree or disagree with that, I think we are all benefited by the fact that this issue is being looked at in such a comprehensive way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily.